The person sitting right next to you has a choice that they have not made, and it's eating them up inside. It keeps them up at night, pondering what if. And I can confess that I had a choice to make too, and I almost did not make that choice. You see, we all have been faced with the choice to pursue our dreams, our prototypes, our solutions, and our sketches that can impact millions of people, hundreds of millions of people, even billions of people. But because of fear and lack of faith, we choose to do nothing. And I almost did not make my choice. You see, I don't like interruptions. I like to have a well thought out plan, and deviations from those interruptions really frustrate me. Academia has always been an important part of my life, so I was absolutely thrilled to be accepted to Spelman College to study psychology as an undergraduate student, and I was honored to become a doctoral student at Carnegie Mellon studying organizational behavior. And my dream was to be an MBA、uh, professor and a researcher and teach students around the world. But an interruption、uh, came into my life and deviated that. And instead of being an academic researcher, I stand here before you today as a medical technology entrepreneur and an inventor. And so people ask me all the time, Courtney, how did you make such a pivot? How did you make such a deviation? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to go back 25 years. So this is a picture of myself and my mom around the time that she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease.、Um, I was so young at the time, and being a caregiver was such a part of who I was. I didn't think that there was anything abnormal. In fact, one of my earliest memories involves taking care of my mom. I was sitting next to her watching Sesame Street, my favorite show as a child,、um, and she asked me, "Courtney, can you please press my toes down? They're curling up under my feet." And that was the very first physical symptom of Parkinson's disease that she had.、Um, so caregiving was so much a part of my life. I almost forgot and I almost overlooked my dream, my prototype, and my sketch that can impact millions of people. Years later, my mom's disease progressed, and instead of just having that sort of curling up under her toes, she had terrible posture and balance. So she was constantly hunched over,、um, and that negatively impacted her quality of life. It even led to increased fall risk. So I remember、um, sitting in my apartment and calling the National Parkinson's Foundation, and I asked them for a solution that could help her. And I remember speaking with the operator, and she said, "I understand the problem that your mom faces. Many of our patients face this problem, but unfortunately, I don't have a solution that I could recommend to you." So I sat in my room and I just、um, thought, "What can I do next? Do I continue down the path that was familiar and laid out for me, which was academia, or do I go to a new path, which was entrepreneurship?" And I chose entrepreneurship. Now, before you get excited, I want you to understand the full situation. I was going to build a medical device company with no engineering experience at all. <laughs> I mean, I have a hard time building IKEA furniture. <laughs> my dad and my uncle and a contractor had to help me build my bed in grad school because that's how confusing engineering is to me. But I also knew that my mom and many like her needed this solution. So I ended up、um, scared, anxious, and afraid.、Um, but knowing that, despite not having my engineering experience, I had so much experience being a caregiver, and I was to learn that while I was in uncharted territories, that that was actually the best place for me to be to build my company. Because I could rely heavily on my experience as a caregiver, as well as my faith and my belief in Christ. So, I built a bill of life. We're a med tech company, and we have a back brace that's on the market with a patented pulley tensioning system that physically lifts the shoulders up and back to improve posture and balance for people who have difficulty with their posture and their balance. And so, this is the brace here. It's on the market. It's reimbursed by insurance. We've had over 170 clinicians in around 40 states write a prescription for this brace, and it's improving quality of life for patients. And so, thank you.
So people often ask me, Courtney, how did you make such a huge shift and a huge pivot from academia to becoming a med tech entrepreneur? So I have three steps that I just want to share with you all. And the first is to realize that you have a unique perspective. So while I didn't have experience um, as an engineer, I did have experience as a caregiver, 25 years to be exact. So I remembered hanging out with my mom, and she was trying to watch one of her favorite TV shows, The Big Bang Theory. Um, and she was sitting, and her face was like almost in her lap. So I stood behind her chair and held her shoulders up and back. And I kept thinking, what if there was a desi device designed that could do the work that my hands are doing currently? The second step is to test everything. So I relied on my rigorous PhD training um, to test my assumptions time and time again to ensure that I was bringing out a product that actually would improve people's lives. So one of the more memorable tests uh, that I have is the very first time that a patient tried on the brace. It was a sunny afternoon in the middle of the week, um, and I had the brace, a prototype, on my desk, and I remember feeling very anxious because this is the first time that someone outside of my team would be trying the brace on. I remember just thoughts going through my head. Is it going to work for him? Is he going to like it? So the time came. He and his wife buzzed um, the door. I let them in, and he was walking in with a walker. Um, his wife was close behind him, just watching to make sure he wasn't going to fall. Um, he came over to me, and he said, you know, I've been praying for a long time for some relief from my back. I hope this works. And I told him, I've been praying a lot too. I hope this works for you as well. So we all kind of braced ourselves and held our breath as he put on the brace. And, um, you know, the thoughts going through my head were, um, maybe he won't like it, maybe it won't work. But after his reaction, his wife's reaction, I could just confidently say that it did work for him. Um, he, the look of joy on his face, um, the relief from having that low back pain was amazing to see. Uh, and Parkinson's patients all around are so supportive of what we're doing. In fact, we use a lot of their feedback in the prototypes that we made. We made about 15 different prototypes of this product. Um, and just a few weeks ago, a patient came up and said, hey, would you ever consider making a Steelers-themed brace? <laughs> and I said, I don't know if I can make that design change, but I can say that the brace will help you with your posture despite your favorite sports team. <laughs> so everything was going great. I was so excited. I had something that worked. Patients liked it. But then an event careened into my life that would test my faith like never before. And that event was my mom passing away. She lived a wonderful, full life, um, and she was loved by many and loved many. My mom, my dad, my sister, and I got to experience her love and her warmth. Uh, and she inspired me to continue on with my company. So the last step is never forget your why. Why did you start your project? Why did you start your journey? I believe that when we're faced with obstacles, if we can have the obedience to look past our wants and our desires and just focus on helping and serving others, truly amazing things can occur. So I've done it. I have exposed the choice that I almost did not make. So now it's your turn. What are your dreams, prototypes, sketches, solutions that could impact millions of people? hundreds of millions of people, even billions of people. And do you have the faith to do something? Thank you. Thank you.